And give us a sense of your findings and why we should pay heed to them. So there's, there's a lot of different vaccines. I think more than 15 vaccines available for COVID-19. BioNTech is at the top, probably the most effective available. And then Sinovac is one of the more moderate effectiveness vaccines. And so this 10 times difference in antibody levels is kind of what we were expecting. It's not brilliant. We prefer all the vaccines to be more effective. But given the limitations in supply of many of the vaccines, uh, if you had to choose between having Sinovac and having nothing, it's still definitely better to have Sinovac. And it saved a lot of lives in Asia, in South America, around the world. Does this mean that there's, we're just going to need more booster shots then when it comes to these non-mRNA Mo Most likely the antibodies from the Sinovac vaccine that won't last as long, so they're, lo they're lower, and they won't last as long, so it means people who get the Sinovac will need a booster sooner than people who got the BioNTech jab, maybe early next year. Mm. Um, but in the meantime, it's still really good that we have all these different vaccines available, um, and we've seen them save many, many lives. Well, OK, give us a sense. You, you know, you're saying if the BioNTech one gives you 10 times the amount of antibodies than uh, the Sinovac mm. one. Give, what does that mean, actually? Uh, Protection is much, much higher. So we can link up uh, antibodies with protection, and we've got a, like a little graph that we can read off the values. So if you go way up that graph with antibody levels, you're going to go way up in terms of protection. So it does match 95%. But you can still protection. carry the virus, can't you? That's the thing. It's, but the viral load is a lot lower. For people who've had the BioNTech vaccine, actually, they're much, much less likely to even get infected. Mm. If they do get infected, the viral load will be lower. So altogether, they're much less likely to pass on the virus because they probably wouldn't get infected, and even if they did, they'd have less virus. For people who get the sign of a vaccine, it's not so clear-cut. They may still be able to get infected, still able to pass on infection, but they'll have a milder infection, and that's how it's saving lives. Are you getting enough data out there now, Ben, about how long these antibodies actually last in the body? Uh, in our study, we're going to be following up to see in Thailand. They've got a report uh, just came out very recently suggesting that for people who get signed about the antibodies only last for maybe three months. And then after that, they're, having, they're, they're, they're no longer detectable. The person may still be protected, but the levels of antibodies are, are really not at a detectable level, which is a problem for things like the vaccine passports in Hong Kong, where we're doing the antibody test on arrival. That's yeah. going to pose a problem for people who are going for the antibody test huh. if they wait too long after they've been vaccinated. Um, so there's going to be issues along the line, but at the same time, we simply don't have enough BioNTech, enough AstraZeneca, enough of the other vaccines. So we need more vaccines. Otherwise, uh, we've seen the situation with Delta in Asia is posing real, real problems. And the more vaccines we have earlier, the better. I mean, it was October last year. We were talking to, of course, all these uh, vaccine experts, and you know, they're saying, okay, the, the virus will mutate, but mm. when it does, it's to ensure its own survival, and actually, it becomes less virulent. Do we see that with Delta or even Delta Plus? And are there any signs of any further mutations of this? Unfortunately, Delta's gone the way that we were hoping it wouldn't. Delta's got more contagious, probably more serious as an infection, um, and it's spreading much, much faster. There's a variant called Lambda in South America, which is also concerning. It seems to be able to get around the vaccine more so than Delta or Beta, the South African variant. So I think we're still in this for the, for the long run. But having said that, places like the UK, the US that are getting on with their lives, they are going to get to herd immunity. It's just not through vaccination alone. They're mm -hmm. going to have immunity from vaccinations and even more immunity on top of that from infections. And then after they hit herd immunity, possibly with a lot of infections, then they'll really be safe at that point from further waves of COVID. Whereas us in Asia, in Hong Kong particularly, I think we're going to be uh, with zero COVID strategy for quite some time, worrying about the virus getting in. Which vaccine do you think ha has the highest efficacy rate against Delta? So uh, uh, right now is BioNTech and Moderna have okay. the highest level of efficacy against Delta. What we're hoping for is maybe 2.0 version, BioNTech 2.0, Moderna 2.0 or others, which are specifically against the Delta variant. That's possible. Mm. And it's one of the advantages that mRNA vaccines uh, offer because they can be updated so quickly. But I haven't heard about when that might yeah. come online. But hopefully that, that would really be exciting if that happened. What do you make of mixing vaccines? I think it's a lot of potential, but we haven't tested it. Yeah. So I, I think it's a missed opportunity because when BioNTech was made, the, the developers just look at BioNTech plus BioNTech. When Sinovac's made, the developers look at Sinovac plus Sinovac. Nobody's really yet looked at combining them in Hong Kong or in other parts of the world mm. with AstraZeneca, with other vaccines. I think immunologically there could be advantages, mm. immunologically, but we can't recommend it until it's been tested. Right. So I, I'm not very keen on the idea in Thailand where they said Sinovac plus AstraZeneca that hasn't really been tested in clinical trials. So we think it should work, 
but I think it needs to be tested first. You, you advise the Hong Kong government. Uh, we just reached 2 million when it comes to vo fully vaccinated Hong Kong people. We're making some progress, but mm. what else still needs to happen, do you think? Uh, I think we need a clear plan of what's going to happen and when. Are we looking to stay with zero COVID for another year or two years or three years? Or are we looking to start living with the virus at some point? And if so, when? We've heard Singapore talking about that. Mm. Unfortunately, I don't think it's possible to achieve herd immunity through vaccination alone. We're not going to get to a pace where we're safe from the virus just from getting a high vaccine coverage, whether it's 70%, 80% or even higher. Mm. I think it won't ben, be enough. Why? Because why, the why? vaccines are simply not effective enough to stop something like Delta. So if BioNTech's 85 to 90 percent effective, even if you give almost everybody in Hong Kong the BioNTech vaccine, we won't have herd immunity. We're going to need to let infections spread. And then you have the immunity from vaccinations plus infections, which gets you to herd immunity. So we're, we're going to be wearing masks for years then? Well, we can choose. We can choose to either live with the virus mm -hmm. and there will be infections, or we can choose to continue with zero COVID like we've been doing for the past year, keep it going for another three years, even longer. If that's the strategy, I think we, we should make a plan accordingly because a lot of businesses would probably like to know yeah. if we're going to be in zero COVID for another three years.